We're back with James McAvoy. Um, so in your film, uh, Speak No Evil, a uh, couple families are on vacation together in Italy. When you were young, uh, you did not vacation in Italy. I uh, did not, no. Your, uh, but your grandmother was in charge of planning the vacations. Yes, she was indeed. We, we actually made it to Spain a couple of times. We made it to Corfu, I think, uh, in Greece. And then, uh, but my gran would, she would like make little mini holidays everywhere. And um, she quite often sort of drive us around before the internet, before Google, before you could go on your phone, you, there was a time. <laughs> and um, she would not be able to do that, but she would always look for fun fairs. And look like for, carnivals. Yeah, and like, uh, we would call it the shows. Okay. In Scotland, we call it the shows. Um, so we'd go looking for the shows. And you would just get in the car and just drive around until you, what, saw like a Ferris wheel? Like, what was the plan? She, pretty much, that yeah. was the plan. That was actually the plan. And, but you'd have an idea of where you could sniff them out and they'd be like, they'd be like, what? <laughs> like, you know, carnival sniffing, it's a thing, guys. And, um, <laughs> carnival and, sniffers are very, you know, you know. It's a very good skill in Scotland. You'd hire yeah. a carnival sniffer. And There'd they be would a just whole sort of... like subculture now and like, <laughs> They dress a certain way and they meet up in <laughs> Vegas and like get freaky with each other. And um, anyway, <laughs> I, um, uh, yeah, you'd know where they were. They, you'd know they were near the seaside. They would always be somewhere there. And what was the appeal for you guys? Was it the, uh, the rides or was it the performance? Rides, okay. absolutely, rides. Um, just loved fairground rides all the time. And then we'd get kind of like, get pulled into the circus part of it as well sometimes, but it kind of freaked me out, and yet I was kind of attracted to it at the same the, time. With the performances of the circus would freak you out, or? Absolutely, yeah. terrifying. Did terrifying. You, yeah, oh, I agree with you 100%. Like, you know, you could see the dirtiness of it, and the, listen, I'm really sorry if anybody's a circus performer and they're watching this. <laughs> um, and if anybody finds this triggering, please call. Um, <laughs> but no, I did, I found the circus quite upsetting. Actually. I will but, say, yeah, I was a, a compelled to watch it. I, I went to a circus uh, last year in New York City uh, with my kids, and I want to stress, I feel like circuses have taken a huge leap from, or maybe I've just matured um, and like not been so freaked out by clowns. But I saw I'm a going fantastic. To to, I'm so sorry. I'm going to stand up. Why are you standing up? I'm not going to fart. I um, <laughs> oh, cramp, just cramp. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. Just cramp. Yeah. Um, I would have been. So happy if you did the reason you stood up was to fart. <laughs> I would not have been happy, I can tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Now I just feel like you're showing off, though. I had, why, because I had cramp? No, I feel like maybe somebody, like, gave you this really nice clothes and were like, and if somewhere halfway through, if you could fake a cramp, <laughs> just uh, so we could see how the outfit looks. Seth likes my clothes. <laughs> Seth said he likes my clothes. Let's go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for, you know, you didn't have to see it, but thank it's you It's really good. It does look really thank good. You. Um, uh, have you, what, you, what was the first acting uh, job you landed? Oh, I was 16. Uh, it was a movie called The Near Room, which is a quote from Muhammad Ali about the space that he would get into where the, I can't remember exactly what it is, but in that space, alligators play trombones, amongst other things. And, um, and it's true. And um, uh, it was a film about child prostitution and pornography in Glasgow, and I got cast in that. Uh, out of the blue, never acted before in my life, and this director asked me to come in. He'd met me in my high school, because he came and gave us a chat about Macbeth for our English class, and he called the school and he said, is that kid still there? Because I'd offered to make him coffee, like when he was making a movie or something, I'll be his tea boy. And... Uh, <laughs> Do you, do you guys, you guys have a connotation for T-Boy? No, but it feels like there is one. It feels, feels like it might be mildly xenophobic. Um, uh, and uh, he called back to school and said, there's that guy who wants to come and make me coffee still there. And so I came along and, uh, and I, I didn't make him coffee. He gave me the script. I read the script. He said, can you come and read this part? It was a big guy called Kevin Savage. And, um, and I read it once and he went, can you make yourself cry the next time you do it? And I was like, I don't know. I'd never done any acting before. And he, I did it and I did make myself cry. And then he went, and that's when I learned that good acting is crying. <laughs> and um, and uh, he was, we left the room and as we were leaving the room, he was like, we've got him, this is the guy, he's gonna play Kevin. And then we walked out in the corridor and this actor came down the corridor who I recognized from a, a kid's TV show that I used to love called Streetwise. It was about a bunch of mountain biking, crime-fighting mountain biking couriers. Great. In London. 
And the guy who ran the company was the saxophone playing Andy Serkis. Right? Oh, wow. And Andy comes walking down the corridor and he's playing this dreadlocked Glaswegian Scottish pimp. And, uh, and David, the director, David Haven, goes like, he's the real deal. He's from a council estate in Glasgow, a project. And he goes like, he's got the right accent. And so Andy goes like, come with me. And so my f I'd literally just been told I was an actor for the first time in my life. And then Andy Serkis pulls me aside to start like learning my accent. It was nuts, it was nuts. That's fantastic. That and wicked. then, but, but like day, how many days in were you like, oh, this is what I want to do the rest of my life? Did you know uh, right away? I think I was like about eight years in before I knew that this is what really? I wanted to do. Really? Yeah, yeah. Were they waiting for you back at school or are they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were like, where's the one we sent out to get coffee? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't do much after that. I did like a couple of little bits and bobs on TV and stuff, but I didn't have an agent, didn't have anything. And um, I went to acting school when I was 18. And then the rest, as they say, was that. And now uh, you've, you've made a name for yourself um, across the pond as well. And you know, you've gone from a guy who uh, goes to carnivals that your um, grandmother finds, and you love <laughs> theme parks. You I love do. love American theme parks. I actually do love American yeah, theme parks. Yeah, these are not jokes. These are just you. That's uh, quite a famous out. American theme park. Hey. Uh, Releasing my latest movie, Speak No Evil, Universal Studios. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, guys. Uh, speak No Evil. Here you are uh, enjoying this way more than, <laughs> way more, way more than my auntie Tricia and my <laughs> uncle Johnny. <laughs> Uh, not just uh, West Coast, find your way to Pennsylvania. Wait, do you have something more to say? I want to say something, John. John. To be fair, she loves it. She loves yeah. it as much as I do. Yeah, Go but on. you're maybe saying John is uh, not on board. Johnny. I think he's grown into it over the years. Yeah. But uh, he's really committed. Uh, they got Hershey Park. Uh, uh, yes, yeah. yes, amazing. I've been to Hershey Park twice now. It's an amazing <laughs> place. Fantastic. And, uh, and here's Dorney Park. You look really happy there. Dorney Park. I've got to tell you, Dorney Park is pretty special. I love Dorney Park. And can I say something? This is the most American I've ever seen you look. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I think this look, guy stands to fart. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I tell you something weird? Yeah. Tell me something. I want to, can I tell you something weirder? <laughs> yeah, tell Go something. back one picture. Rewind okay. time. Okay. Okay. We've done this twice in this interview. Did you know when this? Anybody been to Hershey Park here? <laughs> A lot of people. Um, what is the weirdest thing about Hershey Park? One person. Go. It smells like chocolate. Okay. No, but that is cool. <laughs> I would say. I expect that when I go to Hershey Park. <laughs> the weirdest thing I found about Hershey Park is that you can't buy Hershey chocolate in the park. Really? No! Did I thought, they tell you why? Uh, it's something to do with the people that own the park aren't Hershey or something. So you have to kind of like leave the park. And when you go through the gift store at the end, it's like Hershey chocolate, like gotcha. amazingness, right? But when you're walking around the park, you can buy like Coca-Cola, you can buy Sprite, you can buy M&Ms and stuff like that. But you ain't buying, I might be lying about M&Ms, but you, <laughs> you ain't buying Hershey chocolate. So you're just smelling sweet, sweet Hershey chocolate and sweet, there's just no way to Hersh. scratch that itch. You can scratch that Hersh itch. <laughs> well, we'll yeah. end on Hersh itch. Hersh itch. Hersh itch. Um, thanks so much for being here. Thank it's always you. such Cheers. a pleasure. Congrats on the movie. Jane McAvoy, Speak No Evil is in theaters September 13th. 30th, excuse me. No, 13th. We'll be right back with more late night. 13th.